So there is a pastor who is out here who is claiming a prophet. So the only way the grace functioning in me will work for you is that you come and bribe my angels. I've never heard such language, so we're gonna we're gonna really look into this language. Does it sound biblical as short as this clip that we got? But secondly, we're gonna deal also with a particular subject of the building that Sia One, Prophet Sia One is building in Nigeria. Very weird stuff that's going on around, but what can you say? It's a reality show, we do daily Christian commentary videos. If it's your first time over here, do be sure to check out the other videos that are down in the pink comments when you're done watching these other ones. They follow by numbers. They are all, if watching all of them will take you less than 20 minutes today. So first, this particular building that he is commissioning, he did a video explaining the entire location and saying that people should start getting ready to come through and see him there and the entire Hunan Hajas. And basically the, the building looks like a cathedral kind of a thing. It almost looks like a Masonic building or something like that. It kind of reminds me of this idea of location-based religion. We've termed it this particular term, we've spoken about it previously, and you will remember that we mentioned, you see it in John chapter number four, where Jesus actually tackles this particular idea to say, thinking that being in a particular location is better you have actually deceived yourself. Speaking of this location, basically, this brings us straight into this particular subject of this prophet because this prophet thinks, this prophet thinks that particularly his location is special. So let's hear what he said. I'll play it up here and I'll keep commenting as we go here. We need your money to come on my altar so that my altar will touch you. The only way the grace functioning in me will work for you. First he says, we need your money. That sounds very... We need your money to come on my altar. So that... eh, I don't know. You know. It just doesn't sound... You know, we need your money to come into his altar. Fine. Then he says, this is for the sole purpose that your your money may touch onto his grace so that you can be successful. That's so that my altar will touch you. The only way the grace functioning in me will work for you. For the grace that's functioning in him to function for you or to function in you. Bazalone, I've always stated this thing. I don't know of this idea of functioning in other people's grace. The Bible is very clear in John chapter number one. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So I don't know what grace a pastor carries that I need. Okay? He says that, that we beheld his glory full of grace. And truth. So I don't know what grace functions in brotherhood. I don't know what grace functions in your pastor that you need his grace over the grace that Christ, the one that is, he says, come unto the throne of grace that you may receive. So I don't know what grace you go to to get to a person. So you can hear it's not sounding very biblical so far. Because the more money in my hand, the faster I reach the assignment they gave to me. So the easy is the more money in his hand, the faster he reaches. So my question is, very curious question <laughs> i should say my question therefore would be this are you using private jet to the, to get to this destination where you're going to get this blessings it will be like jesus he <laughs> sent others to go and get a donkey for you <laughs> that was that was horsepower there there's serious horsepower. that's where the term horsepower comes from for those that don't know <laughs> it's a why does he need more money to accelerate? It's like money is the fuel for speed. Mammon, the worship of mammon. But I want to take it back then. When he said that he, you need to bribe his angels, that tells you something. What does it tell you? It tells you of something that the epistles warns about when he talks about the worship of angels. In the but you do remember that particular point about the worship of angels, which is warned. Now, because it's mentioned very few times in the New Testament, you can dismiss it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Here you make the assignment, the faster they work for you. There's no juju in it. My God. There's no juju in it. So I find that very strange that he had to even say that there's no juju in the entire mat. It's only... <laughs> I find that weird. Right? That it doesn't sound biblical, that there's no juju in it. But hey, who am I to say? I don't... Because I can't track what he's saying. Notice, I can't track what he's saying from a biblical standpoint. I can't bribe an angel. When you see the interactions between angels and servants of God in the in the Old Testament to the New, 
you can't bribe them. They are there for what they are there for and they are out. Now, proclaiming something that's far, far. I don't know if he speaks like this because he's deceived or what, but he, they are now brave to say something that's completely far from Christianity. You are bribing an angel. Where do you get that?